Right, we are looking at investigating ESG practices. Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton is demanding answers from BlackRock CEO Larry Fink about the company's involvement as an investor participant in Climate Action 100 Plus. The investor-led initiative is pushing the green agenda, pressuring energy companies like Big Oil to drill less and pressuring investment portfolio managers to uh, freeze out fossil fuels. Joining me right now is the man himself, Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Hey, good morning, Maria. So have you heard back from Larry Fink? What did you hear? I know you sent a second letter yesterday after the company released a statement on its involvement with uh, Climate Action 100 Plus. Tell us what you're hearing. Yeah, I don't think Mr. Fink wanted to answer these uncomfortable questions, but there's no question that climate action is a combination conspiracy, really a climate cartel that's specifically designed to drive up the price of gasoline for America's consumers, drive up the price of electricity by putting pressure on the oil and gas industries or businesses that are heavy users of oil and gas. This is clearly a violation of their fiduciary duty to their investors, in my opinion. It's probably a violation of the civil antitrust laws, which exposes them to triple money damages. And it's quite possibly a violation of the criminal antitrust uh, laws. So any CEO or any investor who's thinking of joining the climate cartel better talk to their lawyer and they better be wary because when we win the Congress, I'm going to make sure that we conduct oversight and expose these practices. And when the Department of Justice is no longer waging war against the oil and gas industry, I suspect they'll want to investigate this climate cartel as well. Well, look, I know Larry Fink for a long time, and I know that he would often boast about the fact that he is most companies' largest shareholder, right? Because he has this enormous ETF business. So he says he is everybody's largest shareholder. So he has the kind of influence to push new rules or to say, look, I'm not going to invest in your company if I don't see a change in the way you operate. That's what happened to ExxonMobil. They're not even pursuing the actual business because the investment has dried up in terms of the actual drilling and, and, and fossil fuel business. So in his annual report, this last uh, year, uh, Larry Fink said, we don't want to be the, uh, the environmental police. And yet he is over and over again telling companies what he wants to see the way they operate differently away from fossil fuels. Yeah, Maria, he's not. Well, I wouldn't say that he's the largest investor because Black it's rock. not his money. Right. He he managed he manages money for other people. This is not like Warren Buffett, for instance, putting his money in. I might still disagree with his investment choices, but it's his money. But Larry Fink is managing the money of other people and setting himself up as the climate police. He's also not coincidentally one of the largest donors to the Democratic Party, and he's acting in effect as the corporate wing of the Green New Deal. It's not just Joe Biden's administration who's refusing to sign new leases or issue permits for new drilling in a timely fashion. It's his buddies on Wall Street who are trying to starve oil and gas companies of the capital they need to produce more oil and gas. Yeah, this all make, works in concert towards their stated goal, which is to eliminate the fossil fuel industry. That's what make, Joe Biden said on the campaign trail. You make such an important point that it is other people's money because you have unwitting investors um, investing in his ETFs who may or may not know that he's pressuring those companies in terms of how they should change their businesses. Because you've got an investor, you know, investing in an index fund. Some of those companies may be part of the index fund. The investor doesn't know what kind of pressure is coming from this head of BlackRock. No, almost certainly most of them do not know because they're simply trying to invest their money to grow their savings so they don't fall behind with Joe Biden's rampant inflation. But Larry Fink is using their money to be the enforcement arm of the Democrats' Green New Deal, almost certainly in violation of the federal antitrust laws. And there's going to be accountability if I have anything to do with it when Congress, when we take back control of Congress this November. Uh, I think it's really extraordinary that at the time of pushing back against American drillers, American oil companies, this firm is actually doubling and tripling down on investing in China, communist China. I think it was a few months ago where BlackRock's uh, Asian investor uh, strategist told investors to triple their exposure to Chinese companies. These companies are likely tied to the CCP and may very well turn around and try to attack 
uh, anybody who comes in its way of becoming the number one superpower overtaking America. So, you know, American oil, not good. Chinese communist uh, companies, good. Yeah, Maria, let's remember the facts of global energy life here. Despite Joe Biden's best efforts, America is still the largest producer of fossil fuels in the world. We could produce a lot more, but we are an energy superpower when it comes to oil and gas and coal. China has the market cornered due to its mercantilist policies on so-called green technology. So think how foolish it would be to hamstring our sources of energy while rewarding and underwriting China's sources of energy, like Larry Fink wants to do, like the Democratic Party wants to do. These folks may march under the banner of climate change, but that banner looks a lot like China, the Chinese Communist five-star flag. Yeah, it's very disturbing, actually. Um, we're going to keep following that, Senator, and we want to know what happens here in terms of what you hear from BlackRock. So please keep us updated. Before you go, I've got to ask you about the final uh, Senate vote on the CHIPS bill happening later this morning. We've been talking with a number of Republicans who are voting no. The chamber voting 64 to 32 yesterday to advance the $280 billion package to boost U.S. semiconductor manufacturing in competition with China. But, Senator, I reported yesterday that the provision from Senator Portman was removed, which would have ensured China was not stealing intellectual property. Schumer removed this anti-China security measure from the spending bill earlier this month. Uh, it's going to now allow Beijing to benefit from this legislation. And also, you know, this administration canceled the Chinese, uh, the China initiative. So we're not even investigating intellectual property theft anymore. Yeah, Maria, that's one of the reasons why I couldn't oppose the bill in its final form. It does address a real problem, which is semiconductor manufacturing happens largely in uh, East Asia, uh, in particular one critical company on the island of Taiwan, which China obviously wants to reclaim. Um, but this is a particular problem, is that the National Science Foundation is largely an academic grant-making institution. It's going to be now giving billions more to universities and colleges that really don't have adequate espionage control. In many cases, they don't want adequate espionage controls, and this is a live problem. The chairman of Harvard's chemistry department faced federal indictment for espionage charges. It happened at the University of Arkansas as That's well. Right. It happens all around the country, and the Democrats refused to include Senator Portman's amendment, which would have at least addressed these counterintelligence concerns. Senator, before you go, I know that China is our number one adversary. Have you had any hearings on the threat of China and its practices in the Senate? We've had numerous hearings, in particular in the Intelligence Committee, Maria. Those aren't public, uh, so they're not something that gets into the news. But I can tell you that China and the threat of Chinese espionage is present in all 50 states, probably all 435 congressional districts. It is pervasive in corporate America, in our universities, in our governments. Yeah, and that's why we saw a string of indictments in the Trump administration. But we canceled the China initiative in this administration. Senator, we're going to keep a spotlight on it. Thanks very much for your leadership on all of the above. Good to see you this morning. Senator Tom Cotton joining us. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you, Maria. All right, we'll see you soon. We'll be right back with the 